Ah, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the Penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies just ahead, traveler. If you'll allow me just a moment. (laughs) Well, next stop, Hyperion City. Detective Steele entered the Fortezza trying to prevent a murder. But the way this case is going, he might soon be the victim of one. A serial killer from 20 years ago has set her sights on our detective. And if she wins, her murderous curriculum will be renewed. Our next stop, Juno Steele and the lesson learned. Hey, Jay? Yeah, Mick? How come it feels like every time I see you, we get trapped in some lunatic's crazy murder game? I don't know, Mick. Just lucky, I guess. Yeah. Now that you mention it, I think you might have pretty bad luck, Juno. Me? Yeah. I mean, the proctor locks us up, gives us both guns, and says we'll have to shoot each other if she's going to give us the antidote to the, the, the what do you call it, the, the sundial toxin? Hourglass venom. <laughs> That's a good one, Jay. But I'm pretty sure it's hourglass venom, like I said. That's not what you- That's enough bickering, Mr. Steele, Mr. Mercury. Now your test is just down this hall. Onward, education awaits. The attic of the Fortezza was a condemned cell block from back in the days when this place was for sealing criminals away, not rewarding them. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of my old wedding gown. It was dusty, smelled like a lot of dreams had probably died in it, and pushed off into a dark corner somewhere in hopes that everyone would just forget the damn thing ever happened. And the worst of it all was the tenant here. The Proctor, a fame-seeking serial murderer who'd just come out of retirement and was making up for lost time. First, she planned to kill Mick and me with intro to chemistry, and then, in two hours, she'd move on to the first candidate for mayor in 50 years who might actually try to make this city a better place. That guy's name was Ramsey's O'Flaherty. And my name's Juno Steele. I'm a private eye. And right then, I was the only thing standing between Ramsey's and death. And me and death. Psst. Hey, Jay. And him and death. JJ, I just thought of something. I was usually the only thing standing between Mick and death. This is, like, my moment, isn't it? I took this job so I could prove that danger is what my life's missing. And hey, (laughs) this is very dangerous. (laughs) That's pretty lucky, I think. With luck like that, you should start investing in lottery tickets. That's not a bad... Don't. Can't make that joke with him, Steele. He'll really do it. What was that? All right, so you want to be a PI or a special agent or something? I I was thinking more like a superhero, but I'm willing to work my way up. If you want to do this, you got to be able to analyze your situation. So, they must have given you some training before they stuffed you in that uniform. Did you pick anything up? I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. And there it is. Except... Oh, oh, they showed a a map of the Fortezza. And I even memorized it. Wait, seriously? That's perfect, Mercury. You're telling me. And hold on. Now, gears are turning. Gears are turning. Oh, sweet shining Nebula J! I think my brain might have just done a clue. We'll clean that up later. This is great. If you remember how this old cell block is organized, you should be able to get us to, I don't know, a boarded up window or wall or something, and maybe we can break through. This floor wasn't on the map. What? Yeah. They didn't tell us anything about these floors during training at all. (laughs) Wow, this Proctor's really smart, isn't she? I mean, I've lost a room before, but losing two whole floors... You'd have to be like a genius to hide two whole floors from the people who own the building. I knew it wouldn't be that easy. I don't know if that's a sign of genius, Mick, but it's definitely a sign of something. Like what? Not sure yet, but I got a hunch. I mean, I didn't want to say anything, but you should probably work on your posture, buddy. That's not... never mind. Are we there yet? I'm tired and he keeps bugging me. Just one more door, Mr. Steele. That's it. Just ahead. Your next exam... Wow, more mannequins. You shouldn't have. We moving on to Art 102 now? No, no, Art is behind us. The three lessons you'll have to pass today are the three R's. Reasoning, reading comprehension, and... Well, the last one's a surprise. Sure glad spelling isn't one of them. I didn't know surprise started with an R. The test on reasoning didn't look like much. Four mannequins stood in front of us, each with a button on its chest and a tangle of wires snaking into its feet. But there was going to be a trick to it. 
There had to be. The mannequins are only half of the test. Are you ready for the second half? Depends. Is it four more mannequins? Jay, that was kind of rude. No, no. I'm afraid not. Now listen closely because I'm only going to say this twice. Twice? Sage, Vladimir. Aisha and Sponge walked down the road together side by side, holding hands. Two wore shirts of red and two wore shirts of blue, but none would stand next to another wearing the same color shirt. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Who? What? Who? What? It's a puzzle, Mick. A stupid puzzle. It's a very good puzzle. Now be quiet. <clears throat> Aisha, the baker whose shirt was red, held hands with only one other person. Sponge's shirt was also red. Vladimir held hands with two people, one of whom was a detective. The other was Aisha. Sage could not tolerate anyone holding her right hand. Vladimir was not the murderer. Well, that got exciting very quickly. Among them were a detective, a baker, a fortune teller, and a murderer. If you do not find the murderer, they will kill everyone else in line, and they will kill you. <laughs> so tell me, which of these four mannequins is the murderer? This is what you got famous for? Seriously? I know. Very impressive, isn't it? I'll give you a tip. In a multiple choice exam, always be certain to eliminate silly answers before... It is not impressive. It's the kind of thing they give to bored middle schoolers when the radiation storms are too bad to go outside for recess. So if you can't solve it, detective, what does that make you? Too busy for this stupid... Hey, wait a second, wait a second. You said you'd say all that twice, right? Can you say it again? You're not really buying into this. You said bored middle schoolers did these. And, well, I was a bored middle schooler for nearly five years. Make you repeated those grades because you never went to school. Come on, Jay, I really need this, please. Fine. Fine, listen to the dumb puzzle again. <clears throat> Sage Vladimir. Aisha and Sponge walked down the road together side by side, holding hands. While our host gave Mick the rerun of her stupid puzzle, I took this opportunity to investigate my feelings about the last few hours. Stupid goddamn waste of time puzzles. Why am I some kind of... Jay, I'm trying to listen. Vladimir hmm. was not the murderer. There, your last reading. Think carefully and be sure to check your answers. It wasn't an easy puzzle, sure, but it was pretty typical crime scene investigation. Gather the clues, listen to the witnesses, rebuild the past. Hell, this was easier. These witnesses couldn't even lie to you. If Mick could solve this, maybe he had a point. Maybe Danger was the only missing ingredient in the Mick Mercury cocktail. Hmm, I see. You do? I thought about it real hard, and my answer is, we press all the buttons at the same time. Or not. A very... Interesting approach. Mick, seriously? Yeah, I mean, I thought about the whole puzzle thing, but then I decided it was probably just a red herring. Because look at them all. They're so weird and creepy. And I swear, a second ago, I saw them all twitch or something. Real murderer stuff. So we got to move, Mick. And the murderer is Sage on the far right. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that's the obvious answer. Oh, yeah? Why is that? Because, uh... <laughs> I mean, I don't think I gotta waste both our, our time <laughs> trying to talk through things we both already know, Jay. Mick, where the hell are you going? Because, <laughs> like, don't you feel poisoned? <laughs> Definitely feel poisoned, Jay. At, at least a little poisoned, so I'll just press this here button. And Damn it, Mercury, that's the wrong button. <laughs> what gives? You said far right. I was going for the far right. You were going for our right, Mick. You need to go for their right. No, I, I mean, well, that's just, yeah, okay, that's reasonable. Excellent job, Mr. Steele. You've passed your reasoning exam with flying colors. Above us opened another trap door, and another ladder fell out. The top floor, finally, and with an hour to spare. Whew. So, uh, good thing we made it through that one, huh, Juno? JJ? Give me your gun, Mercury. What? The gun the Proctor gave you. Give it to me. But, Jay, I'd never shoot you. You know that. You never shoot me on purpose, sure, but whatever the hell's up there for the reading comprehension test? Some monster made of goddamn books or something? You're gonna aim for its table of contents and shoot me straight through the epilogue. But, 
Jay, we always get into trouble, and it was always fine. Yeah, when we were kids. You're 40, Mick. You're not a kid anymore. You're a screw-up, and this stupid danger idea of yours is going to get me killed. Now give me your gun. I'm not a screw-up? Don't. You say it about yourself all the time. Yeah, but it's different hearing it from... Uh... All right. Here's the gun. Thanks. Now let's go. I didn't mean to snap at Mick like that. Well, actually, I did mean to, but I felt bad about it, at least. And that's got to be worth something, right? Anyway, I didn't have time to let my conscience have the floor. I could already feel the hourglass venom working through me. I could feel my head bloat and stomach throb. It would kill me soon. And just a few minutes after that, it would kill Ramses. <coughs> oh, jeez, buddy, I really don't feel so good. Yeah, a fatal dose of poison will do that to you. <coughs> I guess in some ways we're lucky, though. Back in the day, I remember her tests were all over the news, and they were so... There was that guy she killed with a geometry test. I've never seen someone's legs go at that angle before. Or the phys ed case. The lady she made run so hard she wore holes in her feet. Or, the worst of all, home economics. What makes a person do all that, Jay? Who the hell knows, Mick? It's not my job to psychoanalyze the killers. I just lock them up. Then allow me, detective. Raw, creative genius. The greatest minds in the world are overtaken with it. The need to build, to create. When one is as skilled as I am, it simply overtakes you. I am but a slave to the muse within me. But that doesn't make any sense. Mick, stop humoring her already. No, but it doesn't make any sense. If she's got this creative bug or whatever, why should she wait 20 the years? Muse cannot be tamed! <laughs> Those old murders were excellent, of course. Nobody's ever thought of all the applications for a protractor that I have. But genius, like wine, only improves with age. Unless the container's as cracked up as you are, then it turns into vinegar. I am not vinegar! You'll see. This is a new era for the Proctor. My second creative career begins with you, and it'll be even greater than the first. Go. The reading comprehension test is just through that door. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Deadly seriously, of course. <laughs> it's just... 16 more mannequins. Just 16 mannequins, he says. Hasn't anyone ever taught you to read the directions first? Hey, Jay! There's a paper on this table that says reading exam directions. Don't... touch it. Davis Major, Anya, Jean, Cobweb, Hephaestus, nine of their friends, and Sponge were walking down a road side by side holding hands? <laughs> I mean, Jay, that is a pretty wide road, but I don't see what's so funny. This is the best you got, Proctor? Seriously? 20 years to think something up and you start writing crossword puzzles? They are not crossword puzzles. They are works of logical genius designed to test your... Ha! Stop laughing! Ha! Hey, uh, JJ, maybe don't piss off the killer lady so much. No, come on, Mercury, this puzzle is hilarious. Listen to this. Thompson had a deadly nut allergy, but none of them knew Anya very well. Major often confused Sponge with one of their friends in a yellow shirt. Cobweb was known to finger paint with peanut butter. <coughs> the test you're laughing at is going to kill you, do you understand? And then who will be laughing? Time's up! I will! D minus! If you're laughing, you must have a plan, right? You know the solution to the puzzle? <coughs> of course I do. Same as the solution to every test I ever passed in school. Study hard? Apply yourself? No. Cheat. I should have thought of it hours before. Getting rid of headaches is the point of technology, isn't it? Or maybe that's aspirin. Aspirin's a kind of technology. Shut up, Steel. Point is, the Theia Spectrum had a filter for detecting electromagnetic frequencies. Now detecting electromagnetic frequencies. Like that. The cables coming out of the mannequin's feet had to be hooked up to all the other junk in here, didn't they? All I had to do was track whichever mannequin had the cable that went back to the door and not... whatever the hell they were going to do to us. It was hard to see through that rat's nest, though. And even harder with all the shouting in my ear. <coughs> oh, Juno, the mannequins... They're... Not now, Mercury. But it's just like downstairs. I'm trying to tell you... You said that... you wanted to help, right? Well, you know how you can help me right now? By shutting up, staying still, and letting the goddamn professional do his job. Oh. I found it in seconds. 
The mannequin three in from the left had a thick coil of wire extending from its feet through the floor and towards the door on the room's far side. The other mannequins weren't hooked up to any traps I could see, just a little glowing box on each of their chests. When I thought about it later, I realized those were wireless transmitters. And when I thought about it later, I realized I probably shouldn't have interrupted Mick, too. Jay. It's that one. Come on, let's press the button and get the hell out of here. I don't know if you should get so close, Jay. I swear I saw him move and... There, see? Buttons hooked up straight to the door. Now it's open. Let's... Ah! Jay! The mannequins are moving! I can see that. This one's got my arm. And that one gets your other arm! Gee, I had no idea. I educate you. I craft these tests for you with my own blood, sweat, and mannequins. And this is how you show your appreciation? You cheeks! Watch it, buddy. You're gonna pull my damn arm off. Ah! No, 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 no. Don't come any closer. Well, I suppose the last test will have to be cancelled. And too bad. I had an excellent plan for your arithmetic exam. That doesn't even start with an R, you has-been. Ah! Perhaps not. But here's another R for you. Recess. Recess? Hey, that sounds kind of nice. Wow, those things are moving quick! At recess, all rules are suspended. Good luck, Mr. Steele and Mr. Mercury. Your classmates play rough. Jay, what do we do? Personally, I think I say bye-bye to my arm because it feels like Pinocchio over here is going to pull it out of its socket. Seriously! That one almost got me. I fed him off for you, but you took my gun and... Yeah, yeah, don't remind me. Just get the hell out of here, Mercury. I open the door, you go without me. Maybe you can find the antidote on your own. I'm not just going to leave you. You better. Ah! Only thing I want less than for this woodshop project to rip me into is to watch it rip you into first. But I can't. No! Just go before one of those things gets you. I said I wasn't going to leave you. And so in came Mick Mercury to the rescue. This flying. And sure, it wasn't exactly elegant. Ow, 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 that's smart. But it got the job done. Hey, I got him! Huh. And there goes number two. The other ones are getting closer. Make for the door, quickly. That was a great idea, Jay. Good on you, closing that door behind us. Close it? I didn't close it. I thought you did. And locked. Did you really think I'd have remote controls on my mannequins and not on the doors, Mr. Steel? You underestimate my genius. To be honest, Proctor, I haven't seen any evidence of it yet. Of course you have. I have accounted for every possibility. You have been outsmarted at every turn. <coughs> Funny. I remember us outsmarting you twice so far. The biggest test of all, have you? It is wise to save the most difficult questions for last, but your hourglass is running low. Only ten minutes remain before the venom claims you, and only fifteen before I claim Ramsey's O'Flaherty. But you still have one test to pass. Arithmetic. Still doesn't start with an R. The equation is simple, and I'm afraid I won't be able to give you any hints on this one. You will find it written over the doorway you must pass through, and you will find the window you seek on its other side. What about the damn antidote? Oh, if you solve this test, Mr. Steele, you will certainly have found the antidote. Though I must say, that's a big if. Good luck. All right. All right, let's do this stupid puzzle. I think I can feel my lungs curdling. Uh, Jay? Did you look at this equation yet? Because I'm a little worried. I looked. Oh, God damn it! And this was what the Proctor wanted us to solve. A stick figure minus a skull and crossbones equals a picture of an open door. Is that algebra? I was never any good at algebra. The door will only open when we're not poisoned anymore. Hey, that's all right. How do we do that? I have no idea. That's less good. Either that or the door will only open for someone who isn't poisoned. And we know one way to get the antidote. Jay, come on, don't. Here, take this gun. I never should have taken it from you. Just shoot me and get it over with. I mean, come on, this isn't funny. Usually I'm very funny, Mick. Just not trying right now. I'm not going to shoot you. You should. Well, whether or not I should, I'm not, all right? You shoot me. No. Why not? That's a stupid question and you know it. I know you've got your dumb danger thing or whatever, but it's a fantasy and this is real. Just take the damn gun already. My whole point was that I didn't like my life the way it was, all right? I'm not going to like it any better if I got to think about shooting you all the time, okay? 
<clears throat> Look, we've still got ten minutes for this to turn out okay. Okay? <coughs> Anything can happen in ten minutes, Jay. Anything. Or nothing can happen in ten minutes. We spend our time kicking the door, coughing, searching the walls for a secret passage, coughing, scanning the room with a Thea spectrum, and coughing. But that was it. No way through, no secret passage, no hidden antidote. The room was bare. Mick and I were the only things in it. Oh wait, I think at one point Mick might have puked in the corner. But besides that, there was nothing in the room but us. How much more time we got? Two minutes. That long. <laughs> nah, this hurts. <coughs> so what do you think, Mercury? Is this how you expected to die? Yugging it up and wishing you'd kill Juno Steel? <laughs> Kinda, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> ow, 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 ow. So it turns out this job wasn't just the biggest mistake of your life. Mick, it was the last one, too. Hey, don't kill me out yet. I still got a minute and a half. Ah. Mick? Mick! No, no, I'm alright. I'm alright. <coughs> hey, Jay. Why do you think she goes through all this just to kill people? <laughs> I mean, if she wanted to just poison us and lock us in a room, she could have done it two minutes in. Hell, she didn't even need to wait for you. She could have poisoned me while I was napping in the closet. So, why? Why would you do all that? That's... That's a good question, actually. Well, I mean, based on what was riling her up earlier, she probably just wants to prove she's smarter than us. What? But she's a genius. Why has she got to prove it? Being smart and feeling smart are different things, Mick. I guess so. I just can't believe she cheated us after all that. Cheated us? Yeah, I mean, I thought her whole thing was that her victims can technically make it through her tests alive, right? How's it proved she's so smart if she just poisons us and locks us in a room? It doesn't seem fair. No, it doesn't. Actually, now that you mention it, it's not fair at all. I mean, yeah, I'm upset about it too, Jay, but I don't know how much complaining's gonna do right now. And it doesn't prove a damn thing, does it? If one of us has to die, she hasn't proven she's smarter than us. It doesn't make sense. Mick, I'm about to do something really stupid. Yeah? Mind if I join you? Kinda. Just promise me something, alright? If this goes bad, and trust me, it's probably gonna go bad. Promise you'll try the door one last time. How come I get the feeling this isn't gonna be the fun kind of stupid Juno? Mick got that feeling for a good reason. Because the man was a disaster, and a mess, and a klutz, and a... Well, you get the idea. But here's one thing he wasn't. Not really. An idiot. So I took the pistol the proctor had given me, and I pointed it right in between my eyes. Jay! What are you doing? Later, Mick. See you on the other side. Put down that gun! <laughs> Juno! <coughs> oh, Jay! Jay, Jay! Don't leave me here, buddy! Come back! You can't just shoot yourself and leave me! The other side of that doorway! Ow! That smarts! Damn right it does. That's what happens when you load your antidote into the barrel of a revolver, Mercury. You get all the fun of a shot with none of the cartoon band-aids. But, hey, I, I feel better. The poison's all gone. You did it, Jay. We made it. But how? Well done, Mr. Steele. Now as promised, the door. Come along, I'm waiting for you. I'll tell you while we run. Got a mayor to save. Honestly, Mick, you figured it out before I did. The answer's all in the motive. Why does the Proctor kill the way she does? To prove she's smart, you said. Exactly, and it doesn't count as proving she's smart unless there's a way we could have figured it out. She said that if we made it through her test, we'd be cured, which we assumed meant she'd give us the antidote, but she never told us we didn't have it already. But she told us to shoot each other. And because I'm your friend and you're a moron, she knew we'd never do it. So if we had to have access to the antidote somewhere, and there were no hidden compartments or anything in that room... That means she had to have given us the antidote ahead of time. Wow, Jay. You're really good at this, huh? I get by. Barely. And usually with a broken leg or three. This must be the room. And that must be the window you were looking for, right? Looks like it, but... Where the hell is the proctor? Through the window, I could see the Fortezza courtyard below. The crowd of people shuffling into their seats and Ramsey's O'Flaherty shuffling his papers at the podium. I checked my watch. 11.55, only five minutes until the proctor took out Ramsey's, and I had no idea where the hell she was. <laughs> You've 
You've done very well to make it this far, Mr. Steele, Mr. Mercury. Better than expected, I will admit. But this is the end of the line. Welcome to your final exam. Where the hell are you? Damn it, you really did lie to us. I didn't lie to you. I said I was waiting for you, and I was. Just not in the Fortezza. When taking an exam, always remember to mark up the questions. That's how they get you. Where are you? I'm afraid that is the sole question on your exam, Mr. Steele. Question one. Where is the genius murderer? (laughs) On the windowsill in front of you lies a long-range laser rifle. Enough to kill me, certainly. If you can find me. (laughs) A rifle? So do you think she's somewhere down there, Jay? Maybe, yeah, she's gotta be, but... Uh, The rifle doesn't have a stun setting. I can't kill random people in the crowd. You'll get it, Jay. I know you'll get it. You're a sharpshooter. The sharpest there is. Mick. So you better watch yourself, Proctor. He's the best sniper in this city. They call him One Eyeball Steel. Mick, nobody calls me that. One Ball Steel, then. Nope, nope. Went the wrong way on that one. Only three minutes left, Mr. Steel. Your answer, please. (laughs) All the best tests instruct just as much as they measure, you know. I wonder what you've learned from this one. That was a good question. In fact, it might have been the first good question the proctor had asked all day. So what had I learned from this test? The proctor was working with someone. That was for sure. Even a genius could have managed to smuggle all those weapons and mannequins without some serious help. I'd learned that she had confidence issues, too. That whoever had hired her had probably pulled on that. Told her that she'd never be able to pull off what she did 20 years ago which meant whatever the answer was to this exam, it had to be perfect. It had to be flawless. Flawless. And don't I know it. It's got to be flawless. That means the diorama down there has to be completely accurate. But you told me the diorama said the laser must have come through this window. Straight from here to the podium, Mercury, but it never said which direction. She's hiding inside the podium? Time's up, Mr. Steele. You have five seconds to answer. There was no time and another problem to deal with. In order to shoot a laser from here to the proctor, I'd have to send it through Ramsey's O'Flaherty's head. So I fired a shot to break the window, and I gave the best warning I could. Ramsey's! Doc! And either it was my first stroke of luck for the day, or the old man had a hell of a reaction time, because he was down on the ground before I was finished shouting his name. Target locked. (gasps) Did it work? Did it work? I guess so. I finally did beat my intellectual match. All right, at the start of this whole mess, you said you'd tell me who you're working for if I passed all your tests. Well, I passed them. Start talking. I suppose I must. I haven't much time left. You want to know who hired me to kill Ramsey's O'Flanty? It was his worst enemy, of course. Oh, come on. No more tests, no more riddles. I won. Education is its own reward. Now, here's your final question. In order to find Ramsey's enemy, you must go home again. Home? How the hell do you know where I live? A frozen place, this home. A land of the past. Of heroes. Of justice. A place further than the inky blackness of space, yet as close as the heart of every child. Oh, Mr. Steele, you'll find Ramsey's enemy. If you just go home. Damn it, stop babbling and give me a straight answer. You'll never solve this. I can hear it in your voice. You've lost. I won. Don't die on me. I am talking to you. I'm the smartest. I've beaten you. I can beat anybody. Ramsey's barked a few orders, and the cops were off with their tails between their legs looking for a way to get us down through the Fortezza window. In the meantime, Mick and I celebrated. As well as you can celebrate in the dusty old attic of the person you just killed, anyway. So, we made it. That's something, right? Sure, Mick, it's really something. Got a little hairy there for a few minutes, but I always knew we'd make it through. Or at least I often thought we would. Sometimes suspected. (laughs) Hey... What do you think that riddle she said at the end meant? It sounded pretty tricky to me. 
I don't know, Mick, but if it's all the same to you, I don't really want to think about the Proctor right now. I get it. I get it. I just don't understand, Jay. She was so smart. She made all those crazy traps and stuff while she was locked in a prison cell. And even if she did have help, she had to build all that so quickly and so secretly. She must have been one of the smartest people on Mars. So why'd she have to prove that she was smart all the time? Why'd she have to kill people to do it? I don't know, Mick. Why's anybody hurt anybody? I guess so. I'm sorry. For what? I don't know. I just felt like one of us had to apologize, and you weren't going to do it. Yeah, that makes sense. But look... Mick, maybe I should apologize. I gave you a lot of crap about your stupid danger theory, but... You were right. We made it out. Again. I wish you'd do something else, but who the hell knows? Maybe you're onto something. Wait, seriously? What are you, stupid? What? (laughs) Taking this job was one of the dumbest things I've ever done, Jay. I didn't make it out because I'm lucky or I'm good at dealing with danger. I made it out because you bailed me out. I'd be chalk dust without you. That's probably true. And surprisingly responsible. I don't know why nothing ever works out for me, but you were right. I don't think getting in danger all the time is the answer either. Maybe it doesn't really matter anymore. I mean, I'm just going to make myself miserable if I'm always trying to be the guy I used to be. So I guess the hard part... The hard part is figuring out who the hell I am now? Does that sound right? You can always just stay so busy that you don't have time to think about it. That's usually what I do. But for what it's worth, Mercury, I think when you finally figure out who you are... You're going to make an impact. Oh, Jay, that's the nice. Only question is whether the impact is the galactic peace kind or the gigantic smoking crater kind. Could really go either way. No. That still might be the nicest thing you've ever said to me. You're welcome. The cops got us down a few minutes later. I told Mick to go home and then waited on the edge of the crowd while Ramses talked down the reporters. But I couldn't stop thinking about the proctor. About the sound she'd made on her last breath. It wasn't that I thought I shouldn't have killed her. I I was just a little shaken, I guess. Because if real evil exists, then the Proctor, a woman who'd killed 20 people without remorse, was it. But that means sometimes evil is just someone trying to prove to the world that they're worth something. Or just prove it to themselves, maybe. You know, you cut it a little close at the end there, but overall... Nice work. Come on, I'll give you a ride home. Home. This isn't over yet, Ramses. Mm-mm. The Proctor said she'd been hired by someone to kill you. Your worst enemy, she said, and whoever they are, I don't think they're going to let up. Did she now? Well, I suppose that's what I have you for. Ramses, I don't know. What else did the Proctor say to you? It was some kind of riddle, I guess. I couldn't make any sense of it. Something about going home, a place of heroes, as distant as the stars and closest kids' hearts. <laughs> what? What's so funny? An interesting place to strike. I'm surprised I hadn't thought of it sooner. You know the answer to the riddle? I do, in fact. My limo will bring you home. On second thought. I don't think I'll be coming with you. I have some calls to make. Ramses. Tomorrow morning, I think. No, no. I'll send a car for you again tomorrow night. Rest up until then. Ramses, listen to me, damn it. Where the hell is she trying to send us? All this stupid stuff about my home? (laughs) Oh, no. When she said home, she didn't mean yours. She meant mine. Bring him home, please. Ramses, you can't start talking nonsense, too. All in good time, my friend. Rest up. Tomorrow night, adventure awaits. I watched him as the car pulled away. Ramsey's O'Flaherty, who hadn't even existed 30 years ago, who had a good shot of being the next mayor of Hyperion City. Ramsey's O'Flaherty. The man who was all future and no past. There was something appealing about that, I'll admit. The thought that you could just shed your old self like an old skin and become someone new. Someone important. Someone like Ramsey's O'Flaherty. 
So turn your back on the past, Steel. Tie yourself to the man of the future. And hope that what's ahead is better than what you left behind. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one for Noah Symes, co-creator Kevin Vibert, and actors Allison Schout and Stefano Purdy. I mean, I think this is a testament of Kevin to your writing of Mick and Stefano, your portrayal of him, but, you know, I, I certainly can sort of identify with that feeling of, like, I haven't done enough, or I haven't done what I'm yes. supposed to do. Or... Please don't have let that have been my greatest moment. Right, right. No yeah. matter what that moment is. Right, because, right, you <laughs> never know what the high peak is going to be, and you just pray that it has you can also support The Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at The Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at The Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Jamie Gunter, The Princess and the Scrivener, Hannah Jim, and Elizabeth Miller for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. This tale, Juno Steele and the Lesson Learned, was told by the following people. Joshua Elon as Juno Steele, Matthew Zonzinger as Ramses O'Flaherty, Alison Schote as the Proctor, and Stefano Purdy as Mick Mercury. On staff at the Penumbra, Kevin Vibert is our lead writer and recording engineer. Sophie Kaner is our director and sound designer. Graham Turner is our script editor. Noah Symes is our production manager. Alice Chung is our designer and financial manager. Original music by Ryan Vibert. Promotional art by Michaela Buckley. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon. <laughs>